Chris, welcome to Woodside. Can you just sum up what it means to you to have been appointed as a new manager at Woodford Football Club? Just really excited. It's really excited for the opportunity. Um, just looking forward to it. Obviously, I know Worthing having come up against him a few times and um, so we've been close with Hinch and, and Gaz and Cam and Co from the, the previous regime. Obviously, I know what a good club it is and just excited for the opportunity and um, looking forward to um, moving things forward. I know you enjoyed your time at Hastings, but what was it about Worthing that made you want to come here? Uh, the ambition of the club, first and foremost, the opportunity uh, as a first team manager to uh, test myself at National League South. Um, the playing philosophy was a big one. So when, when I met with um, the owners, when I met with the guys behind the scenes, in terms of their expectations on what they want to see from Worthing as a, as a team on the pitch, in terms of how they operate as a club, I'll be honest, I don't think you can get too much more aligned. Um, you know, and I don't think you can underestimate the importance of genuinely believing and having shared beliefs. So that's a big thing for me. Um, for Sillies as well. So, you know, with what we've got on Woodside, in terms of the type of football that I want to play, I know the club wants to play and the opportunity to develop players and work with players, what we've got here um, gives us a good platform to do that. A lot has been said about culture and philosophy and obviously you touched on it there. What were the conversations like with the people at the club during the interview process? I, to, be, to be honest, like by the time I sat down with the guys, it was in terms of actual football and what it looks like on the pitch and playing style and, and beliefs. That, you know, They'd done so much due diligence and research and I think they'd been to a huge number of games and watched a lot of games. So um, in terms of what to expect from the football club and equally what they'd expect from me. Um, we were all very much on the same page and everyone knew really. It was more around what I was like as a person and like whether or not as people we could potentially work together and because I'm, you know, it's important you, you fill the building with good people. So um, it was more just sort of getting to know each other really. And to be honest, we we spoke for hours and hours and hours and it was um it was a really positive chat and when you walk away from that meeting um feeling like you've known these people for a long long time um i think that can only bode well what does that team look like then what can what can fans expect from a chris agate team well i think as i said the, the club's got such a clear vision on how how it wants to how it wants to play football the way it operates um and ultimately, the club's been incredibly successful doing that. So um, in terms of what the Worthing supporters have seen, it would be more of the same. Um, obviously, there'll be slight nuances and, and tweaks, but attacking, front foot football, possession-based, best form of defence for me is attack. So, you know, I want to make sure that the opposition uh, aren't putting the ball in our net because we've got so much of the football. Um, and equally, you know, I believe that's the best way to develop players as well. So one of the big matches of the football club and he's had so much success developing young homegrown players and I believe uh, the best way to do that is by playing a, a possession break, uh, based technically demanding brand of football um, but above all else I believe it's the best way to win games of football as well so just more of the same and the challenge for me and and uh, Azza and Dino is just to try and move it forwards and build on the fantastic work that's already been done at the club. Touching on your career so far, then you've worked a lot at academy levels, as you as you mentioned at Brighton, East Bombay, Hastings, and Stevenage as well. How much pride do you take in that, and how much are those experiences going to help you in your role here? Oh, massively in terms of obviously working across with the academy as well. So part of my role is being hands on with the academy. Um, that's very important. Um, again, going back to what I said previously, the club wants to produce um, homegrown players. Yeah, they want local lads fighting for the shirt in front of a couple of thousand people helping the club drive forward. So in terms of understanding that, what that looks like, that transition from academy to first team, I think I'm pretty pretty clear on that and pretty experienced on that. So that, that, will, that will have a huge um, impact on touch with my ability to be able to deliver as a first team manager and um, equally as well, just not, not just in terms of younger players, but just developing players as a whole. So whether you're you know, 19 or whether you're 32, I really pride myself on can we add value to each individual player. I don't think there's a, there's a ceiling to it. So, you know, as I said, the, the younger lads are the, amongst the squad, like your choppers and car and people like that. So, you know, there's development there. But equally, 
like with Jake Robinson and and these guys and the more senior players. You know, if we get the opportunity to work with them, you want you want to improve them and, and develop them as as players. So, uh, yeah, I think all, all those experiences will put us in good stead. Just want to look at your time at Stevenage as well. You took on an interim assistant mm. manager role at yeah. doing the. I think it was League Two you were in at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what was that experience like in the football league? That is, it was, um, it was, it was brilliant. Um, you know, I, I, I got offered the job as the 21s, uh, 18s lead. Um, but as I was offered the job, there was a change at first team level. So they said we need you to um, be very hands on with the first team, which was obviously a great opportunity. Um, and that, that's part of my decision to make this step from Hastings to Worthing because you you know I had a taste of first team football at, at League Two and you know we had success like you know the points that we picked up in that in that period of time uh, went a long way to the club staying in the football league so that um, that experience has only sort of added fuel to um, the appetite or the drive to try and get back to that level so going back to the original question in terms of making a step to Worthing that was a, that was a big a uh, big driver and you know ultimately you want to work with, with very good players at the best level possible so that, that was good and, and that actually it was the work of Stevenage in terms of first team level was probably the the most straightforward coaching I've done because obviously the level of player is higher um, the, the surfaces the facilities the, the provision as well so that, you know you can see every opposition you can um you know, you can plan more diligently. So, um, you know, it was uh, it was very enjoyable. As I said, it's a, it was a big driver for me making this next step. You also worked under Adam Hinch with doing it for a short stint at Hastings anyway. Um, obviously, Hinch has achieved so much here and he's yeah. so well loved. Is that something that sort of you're going to look to build on his work and emulate that? Yeah, no so. pressure. Big <laughs> shoes to fill. Uh, yeah, no. Hinch the top man as I said I, I spoke to him yesterday actually like we've um, we've always kept in contact and he had a big influence on me in terms of my first steps into management so you know there's a lot of stuff albeit that we worked together for a short period of time there's a lot of things that he done that resonated with me so I think that in terms of from the club's perspective and why um, they feel I'm the right fit is that they believe I'll be able to continue the work that the Hinch has done and um, ultimately as well it's not for me it's not just a case of maintaining it um, you know Hinch was incredibly successful and they are very big shoes to fill but equally I wouldn't take on a challenge or, or or a role if I didn't think I could be successful in it if I didn't think I could move it forward you know as I alluded to there I'm incredibly ambitious um, I want to work with an ambitious group of players that want to climb the pyramid and, and we're very ambitious as well so um, we're very much um, with the mindset of how can we move it forwards and and, and uh, move it one step further. And uh, Aaron Racine and Dean Hammond, mm, yeah. a pair that obviously know this club ever so well, they've been announced as part of your coaching staff. How much of a boost will it be for you to have them around and how much are you looking forward to getting down to work with them? Oh, yeah, it's, um, it, it's a massive positive because, as I said, that, like, when you're new into a building, it's really important. I think the first thing you do is recognise why it's been so successful and... Um, equally you look at Azza in terms of his impact at the club over a longer period of time you know, what a top man like, as I didn't know him before and we very quickly got to know each other and the way he carried himself and in terms of what I believe is the best fit for me as a manager from a, an assistant manager's perspective Azza ticks all those boxes and as I said he knows the club incredibly well so it would be naive of me not to tap into that and not to use that to our advantage to move forwards um, and equally with Hamo as well I've known Hamo a little bit longer the guys won the Premier League um, there's things that that uh, he knows that I don't know the same with Azza so it's so important that you know for me as a manager I surround myself with people that will challenge me that will that I can learn from as well and I think amongst uh, the three of us plus the other staff we can give the players the best opportunity possible to to move forwards. I mean, Dino, his enthusiasm um, is, is 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 incredible. Like his his eye for detail, his top draw. So again, I, I think between the three of us, we'll be able to bring uh, an awful lot to the table. I mean, we 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 met the other night, and it was supposed to be a, a brief meeting, and we ended up being there till nearly twelve o'clock. 
So talking football and going through the existing squad. And as the big thing is, there's the club's had so much success. The the group that comes so close last year has done incredibly well. So from my perspective, continuity is really important, and it's a case of evolution rather than revolution. Like let's take the best bits which have got us so close, and let's try and tweak one or two things that hopefully take us that step further. You touched on it there, of course, narrowly missing out on promotion loss just over a week ago now. There's naturally still going to be a feeling of disappointment around. How important is pre-season going to be for you to implement your plans and ideas and almost start on what feels like a clean slate with you coming in? Yeah, so going back to my previous point, really, the, the challenge for us is, is again, is to build on um, what's already in place. So in terms of the squad, we're going to try our best to... Uh, retain as many of what has been a very successful um, team so that's the first step um, and in terms of pre-season I mean I, I like to get things sorted early I, I don't like um, to be going into the last week of pre-season my, my team's not in place as I said I'm a coach as is a coach Dino as a coach we want to get that that team in place early so we get a good six weeks to work with the group um, so again uh, you know the off season's really important that we as I said, retain as many of the existing squad as we can. Um, and to be honest, on you know the last two or three days, I've, I've spent talking to every player individually, and you know the, the conversations across the board have been incredibly positive. Um, when you know when you sort of ask like Nathan Cobain, seems like Azza and Dino, you know what are the lads like, and they say oh, it's a great group. I like, genuinely talking to all of them, it was a pleasure. Either that or they were just being incredibly polite to me, but they were, you know, a, a great group of lads. And um, yeah, as I said, conversations have been really positive and I think we've got a really good platform to build from. Well, that brings me on to my next point, actually. How much contact have you had with the players away at the club and how much planning have you done in terms of getting players in? Obviously, a, a lot of clubs have started doing their business already. How much practice? Yeah, I mean, again, that's sounding like a broken record. Like, there's an awful lot right with what we've got in place. So the the first step is to talk to the existing players, and which we've done, um, and see where the land lies with them. And ultimately, because um, often when there's a change, there's obviously a fear that you know they love their time at the football club, and um, as I said, been very successful. They enjoy the brand of football. They enjoy the environment. Um, and when there's a change in, in manager, there's a potential fear that actually all the things they liked could change. But again, I think it reinforces the importance of the, the work that Werven have done in terms of making sure they pick a manager that is a fit for the football club and, and the direction they want to go in. So um, off the back of those conversations with the players and a, a lot of them know who I was anyway and you know either not working directly with them or via... Other people like Hinch and Co and uh, and Gaz, you know, we've got lots of mutual friends and people that know uh, each other. So fortunately, they've done me a good turn and they've been very complimentary, which is great. Obviously, they've seen the success that I've had at other clubs and other organisations. So, you know, I, I think the group are, are very clear on what, um, you know, what the, the, the direction is we're heading in and what they're potentially walking into, which is great. And in terms of uh, recruitment wise, Again, it's testament to the profile of the football club because my phone has absolutely exploded with agents, uh, coaches, uh, and players that that want to come and play for the the, the football club. So um, the, the 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 challenge for us will be is being really uh, as obvious as it sounds, being really deliberate, being really diligent because the perhaps uh, less experienced. Uh, approach would be get excited bring players in left right and centre and and the, you know it's almost like it can be like a kid at Christmas but the challenge is actually you know we've got to be really diligent with it we've got to make sure that what we bring in is either different or significantly improves us um, but again I I really I really don't want um, as I said wholesale changes I don't think it needs it and equally the club um, doesn't want that and Myself, Azra and Dino, we're all on the same page. It's very much um, keep what we've got, the best of what we've got, and add two or three, and we'll be we'll be very competitive again. And as well as all this excitement with your arrival and on the pitch stuff, there's a new stand is being built. Yeah. Currently, his works have started on the new north stand. 
You've touched on ambition. How exciting is it to be joining such an ambitious football club? That's oh, brilliant. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it, you can't not be excited by it. Like when you sit down with George, uh, Barry, the board and, and Naif and all the people behind the scenes and you can, you know, it's not just the words, it's the, it's the way they're said. You can see they're desperate to move forwards. They're desperate to drive Worthing um, higher up the football pyramid. And, you know, you can't not get excited by that. You know, if you, if that doesn't stimulate you and make you hungry and sort of want to, when you push on, you're probably in the wrong game. So, and I'll probably touch on it earlier on, I'm incredibly ambitious. I'm, Again, that that work, uh, working in the football league and that experience, uh, that that is a big driver for me, and that's that's uh, I want to get back to that and more. So it's so important for me with taking this next step that the club that I was going to join shared those ambitions. So um, you know, Worthing Worthing more than does that. So it's uh, it's very exciting. And finally, that what would be your first message to Worthing supporters? It's going to be exciting. It's going to be good fun. Um, that we're going to attack every game. That we're going to we're going to have a go. And the big thing for me is is win, lose or draw. Uh, they're going to see a team out there that uh, you know. There's, there's ways to lose games of football, but they're going to see a team out there that fights for the shirt. As I said, homegrown and hungry players are desperate to do well for the football club, and I think that's so important. Having that connection from the stand and the supporters to what they're seeing on the pitch, I think that's a really powerful thing. And that we're gonna we're gonna do it together as well. We, you know, it's it's gonna be good fun, and we're gonna need them every step of the way. And I can't wait to get started. Thanks, Chris. Welcome to Woodside. Thank you very much, Pinky.